I have been TIG welding for over two decades now. I've trained and taught people TIG welding for almost as many years as that. And today I've got five things that keep most people stuck when they wanna start learning how to TIG weld stainless steel. And I'm gonna teach you what you can do to avoid them to make sure that you get a great start with learning how to TIG weld stainless steel. Let's go! Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna go over here is an extremely important thing that we need to make sure we avoid. And this is bad torch technique. Learning how to properly hold and properly manipulate your torch is extremely important. When this is not done properly, you're gonna experience problems with lack of stability, overall discomfort, maybe not being able to see clearly, and possible risk of injury. That's right, for example, if we are working with a grip that looks like this, what we are gonna do here is put extra stress or strain on small muscles in my hands or wrist. When you're first getting going with TIG welding, if you're not used to holding a torch like this, you're gonna feel all different types of pressure. And after a while of practicing, you're absolutely gonna to start to experience some severe discomfort. So like I mentioned, down the road, this can lead to injury that you may experience as well as just making things a little more difficult when you're trying to learn. If you are straining when you're trying to learn and trying to remain comfortable, there is no way you are gonna remain calm and steady as you are trying to learn stainless steel. Stainless steel requires perfect stability and perfect accuracy while you are welding. We can't be wobbling around being all sketchy. We need to remain comfortable. We need to be able to move from start to finish and remain consistent as we do so. When somebody is not set up properly or comfortably, here is what is common. So take a look at the standoff distance, the arc length or arc distance, whatever you wanna call it. What this is, is the distance from the tip of your tungsten to your workpiece. Typically, when somebody gets set up, they are set up to be comfortable at the start of each pass. However, without being set up stable or knowing how to get comfortable or travel properly, somebody's gonna move along the distance of their weld and the standoff distance is going to start to increase. When this happens, what this is gonna do is introduce problems with gas coverage. You're gonna find that the puddle is not gonna establish properly and it's not gonna be accurate at all. When you are comfortable and you are set up and you're able to see everything clearly, you are gonna be able to maintain this close standoff distance much more comfortably. And when you can do that, you're gonna be able to maintain it from start to finish much easier. So when you're working, maintain a consistent standoff distance. Ideally, this should be about equal to the thickness of your tungsten electrode. See, look at this footage here. I am in nice and close. When you're in nice and close, you're gonna see that your accuracy is much better. The puddle control is gonna be much more reliable. Your gas is gonna be able to do a way better job and go a lot further to prevent any oxide from forming. Taking a little extra time to get set up and properly established is definitely worth it. Here's a trick that I teach all of my students in my online program. So this is what is typical when somebody gets set up for a weld here. Do you see how my wrist or my hand is anchored to the table here? I talk about this with learning aluminum all the time. When somebody is set up with their hand or their wrist anchored to the table like this here, as they start to move, they are only going to have a couple of inches of comfortable travel before they start to get uncomfortable. At this point, somebody is either going to lose the stability or they're gonna be forced to start sliding their hand, boo. Personally, I hate trying to do this, even after 20 plus years of TIG welding. No matter how much I get set up to try and slide perfectly, without fail, my hand or my wrist always gets stuck on something stupid. I cannot slide consistently. It always becomes a little bit bumpy or irregular. Here is what I suggest instead. Move your workpiece away from the edge of the table a little bit further. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna position yourself with your forearm comfortable on the table like this here. You can now see that I can move further with my range of motion as I pivot. Doing it like this, there is no need to start sliding. Getting set up like this, I think you're gonna see that you're gonna be able to see much more clearly with your work. Sometimes getting set up with your hand or wrist like this is gonna restrict vision so you can't see as well, and especially as you start to become uncomfortable while traveling. Okay, so this is something that keeps beginners stuck and this is so common to see. And this will always be not feeding the filler material correctly. Okay, let me know in the comments below if this has ever happened to you. You're just welding along, you're just minding your own business, and then the filler material gets stuck on the workpiece. This causes you to dip and contaminate your tungsten. This is super duper annoying. Now, the reason that this is happening is because you are not introducing filler material to the puddle correctly. It's actually a really easy fix. 
Now again, this can come from somebody who is not able to feed comfortably. Like I said, it is extremely important that we feed the filler material incorrectly. Check this out. Take a look at the diagram here. You see this is the area where the filler material is going to stick. You can see the direction that I am feeding from here. It is sticking to the workpiece right here, the leading edge of the puddle. This is an area where the filler material is not going to be able to break off cleanly and go into the welding puddle. This almost all the time will cause the filler material to stick and grab to the workpiece. Now, here's what else is common. Somebody thinks they're gonna to need to introduce the filler material more towards the center of the puddle. Now, this is gonna do one of two naughty things here. The first thing it might cause you to do is pull your standoff distance back or your arc length, whatever you wanna call it. We just talked about this. We do not want that. We wanna keep in nice and tight. We just learned about why this is so important. The other thing that's gonna happen is you start to introduce the filler material more towards the center of the puddle. Blam! So we can now see why feeding to the center of the puddle presents as many problems that can potentially happen as the leading edge of the puddle. So with feeding the filler material to the puddle, where does this leave us? What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to bend your filler material this way and this way and this way, and then you can feed to the other side. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is the area of the puddle that you want to feed to right here. We can see it is directly in between the leading edge of the puddle like we talked about and the center of the puddle directly under the tungsten. It's halfway between these points right here. This is where the filler material is gonna break off much more easily as well as cleanly into the welding puddle. There will be no need for you to back off with the standoff distance at all and you do not have a risk of touching the filler material to the tungsten electrode. We're gonna be avoiding the leading edge of the puddle so we won't have this problem to deal with anymore. And as you introduce filler material to the welding puddle, you should see it go into the welding pool silky smooth. All right, so these tips that I've given you are things that I desperately wish I had have learned when I first started to take weld stainless steel. Because I had to struggle with my filler material getting stuck or it's dipping all the time, I would always have sore wrists, sore hands from not holding stuff correctly. This leads me to the next point that keeps most people stuck when they first start, and this is getting frustrated. Think about all of the intricacies that we've learned in this episode here so far. How the heck is somebody supposed to learn all this stuff on their own? Trying to get good results without really knowing exactly what to look for. And one of the most deadly things that can affect somebody's motivation when they first get going with TIG welding is frustration. Especially in this day and age with social media, everything that you look at online looks absolutely perfect all the time. A lot of the time, to be honest, I find that people buy a decent TIG welding machine. They get all set up, they get ready to weld, and they expect their stuff to start looking like this. And then once they start trying it out, trying to get some work done, they're gonna to start to find out that this is way more difficult than they thought before they started. So many people try to learn this and unfortunately become discouraged and they lose their motivation to keep trying. A lot of people start to doubt the fact that they can even do it. And believe me, the amount of messages I get from people who bought nice machines, but they're just collecting dust in the garage. Hearing this from people is super sad and unfortunately super common as well. But this is why I want to help people so that they can prevent this from happening in the first place. This way they're going to stay excited, they're going to feel some successes, and they're going to keep learning. Obviously when you're learning, a little bit of discouragement, a little bit of frustration is inevitably going to happen. However, you need to feel success and you need to feel motivation to keep learning. So when you are a beginner trying to learn how to weld, how do we do this? With beginner stuff. Like I said, when people want to learn how to weld, they look online, they see stuff like this. Fancy looking joints, plates, fancy looking pipe. When somebody starts to learn and they take this type of stuff on as a starting point, they are in for a huge struggle and frustration and discouragement is going to set in. So like I said, when you're a beginner, do beginner stuff. Look at this exercise here. Does this look exciting? Nope. You can see why most people skip this type of exercise and head straight for something like this. Obviously, that stuff looks way more fun for sure, but we need to cover the fundamentals first. We're gonna understand some fundamental things like trying to stay comfortable, feeding your filler material correctly, maintaining good posture so you can establish and keep a stable puddle as you are welding. Working on exercises on flat plate is where I start all of my students with. And everybody who's looking to get going, I encourage you to start here as well. Whatever you're doing on flat plate, we wanna work on staying consistent from start to finish, no exceptions. When we are welding, we do not want any areas that are wider than others. We don't want areas that become narrower. Learning this stuff and maintaining a consistent puddle is gonna be way more manageable and easier to achieve when working on flat plate. 
This is also gonna make it easier to focus and learn the points that we talked about earlier in this episode. Consistent and comfortable travel from start to finish, maintaining a good and consistent standoff distance, and being able to comfortably and properly manipulate the filler material. Whatever you're doing, don't make things harder for yourself. Doing these things at a level that is more achievable, this is gonna get you excited and motivated to learn even more. Now, this is something that I learned that was becoming more and more important as I started to learn even more about TIG welding. But as I've become more experienced over the years, I'm starting to realize how much more of a big deal this is than most people think. Not taking advantage of this is something that can keep people stuck and hung up on things for a long time. And this is not knowing how to properly break down your own work. Now, every time I finish a pass, the first thing that I'm gonna do is stop and take a good look at what I've just done. When I was first getting going with TIG welding, when I finished a weld, I would look at something, realize it totally sucked, look around, make sure nobody saw it. There was no time for any self-reflection to figure out what had happened just now. And most importantly, what I could do to make corrections to get even better results. Practicing something and trying it over and over does not fix a problem you do not know you are making. When you are finished a weld, you need to stop and thoroughly have a look at the work you see. This is how you are gonna get good feedback to learn about the things that are gonna get you better results. Even if you finish a weld and you look at it, it looks absolutely awesome, it's perfect. Do you actually stop and take a look at the details and figure out why it's so good? This is an opportunity that you can take to look at these good details and learn about what will duplicate these results for you in the future. Most people don't look at all when they finish a weld, whether it's good or bad. You definitely need to stop and take some time and reflect on what you see. Doing this can really put a lot of important things into perspective for you so that when you get set up to do the next weld, you flip down your mask, you know exactly what you are looking to avoid or exactly what you're looking to achieve. Doing this is gonna waste way less practice material. It should make the absolute most out of the time you spend in your shop practicing and get you back to better results that you are proud of much quicker. Again, like we talked about, when you're getting better results, this is gonna give you motivation and get you excited to learn even more. So stop, take a real moment to reflect on the work that you see in front of you, especially when working on practice exercises on flat plate material. This is a golden opportunity to really put things into perspective before flipping down your mask and doing another pass. I really wish that this was something that I knew way earlier in my career, so take the time to break down your own work. Now, okay, let's say everybody has taken the time to stop and break down and thoroughly scrutinize their own work. A lot of people can still struggle because they don't exactly know what they're looking for. And this leads me to the next thing that keeps most people stuck and that is not having resources to learn. Having something that you can follow like a guide or a lesson plan is something that is going to save you an immense amount of time. Being able to know exactly what to start with as well as the proper steps to take for the progression that you are looking for. This is something that I desperately wish that I had when I first started a weld. Especially because I kinda was just the type of person who wanted to learn and go practice in private. At the shop that I started to learn at, I would stay late, practice after hours, practice on coffee breaks, you get the idea. If I have some resources to follow, not only would it have saved me a ton of time, but it would have made it way more fun. If I was able to practice and know exactly what I was working on first, and especially some kind of goal that I was actually working towards with my welding, this would have given me an exact idea of the trajectory of learning that I was on and where my goals or my certain benchmarks were with my practice exercises. Having material to reference when you are practicing or a lesson plan is so important nowadays. This day and age has never been a better time to go get some resources material for free basically. I have like 300 plus episodes on my channel that you can watch for free. I give PDF textbook pages away for free all the time. And I have free classes on my website that people can sign up for at any time, no experience necessary. If you want to take my free stainless steel TIG welding class, the link is in the description below. This is a legitimate TIG welding class for stainless steel. We take somebody and we start absolutely from scratch. We learn how to properly assemble and understand the gear that you have access to. And then some basic exact lesson plans for some beginner exercises that somebody can follow and how to get to a higher level of understanding with way less frustration. 
And guess what? In this class, I also teach a clear and concise way that you can understand how to properly break down and scrutinize your own work. Literally, we're gonna cover all of the things that I went over in this episode here. If you haven't already, go register for that free class right now, go get it. It's on demand, you can watch it as many times as you want. Practice it at your own pace, it's there for free, go enjoy it. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Bill and Chill, we will talk soon, peace.